Hi, I'm Kyle Bartel. I'm Jesus Chavez. I'm Garrett Romero. And I'm Alfredo Valdez. All right, so let's get started. Our project specifically focuses on the production of semiconductors. Semiconductors do play an important role in electrical devices that allow us to implement advances in all sorts of applications to improve upon previous technology. Semiconductors do require a lot of resources to be produced. Uh, for water, it does require about 2.2 million gallons of water per day and about one terawatt of energy per day. So semiconductor plants do use up about as much resources as a small city. Given this resource allocation, the issues in the industry tend to lie in times of water scarcity or hard times to find uh, other materials for the production. With this background knowledge, our project specifically focuses to reduce the overall amount of water that the semiconductor processing plant uses. Uh, we are focused on spent ultra pure water from wafer rinse processes, which uses up about 35% of overall water usage. The goal is to reduce the total amount of water usage by using a process involving reverse osmosis and ion exchange to repurpose this uh, spent ultra pure water for other processes throughout the fab. For the design of our system, we use the Water Application Value Engine, a software distributed by DuPont. This software requires two inputs for in the design of any water purification system, contaminants and flow rates. Our contaminants, we focus only on ionic contaminants, and we focus on the seven most common ionic contaminants to the semiconductor manufacturing process, as stated in the semi-international standards. Our second input into the WAVE software is our 770,000 gallon per day flow rate. This flow rate was calculated as 35% of 2.2 million gallons per day, which is the expected use by a large fab. To accommodate this large flow rate, we ran two parallel reverse osmosis systems, each with its own manual regeneration ion exchange. We assumed that we would be able to achieve equal flow rates throughout each system allowing for an equal distribution of workload and maintenance. Next up, we move on to the PFD. As you can see, the waste generated from the rinse tools is connected directly to a storage tank, which is then further processed into the RO and ion exchange in a parallel system. The waste generated during the RO is recycled back, and part of it will be sent directly to the fab waste system along with the waste generated in the ion exchange. Uh, the product for these processes will be used for ultra pure water production, uh, scrubbing DI water generation and equipment cleaning, which are in different parts of the fab. As you can see, we have different pumps uh, for mass transfer, as well as their respective storage tanks. And for the waste generated during equipment cleaning is once again going to go through an RO and ion exchange process for use in landscaping, sanitation and other uses as well. Next up, we're moving to the sensors and controls. Uh, as you can see, we have placed several different types of sensors and controls throughout this process, such as analyzing for particulate and concentration. We have temperature control valves, temperature flow, and level sensors for the tanks. All of them are to maintain the safety of the equipment and workers um, and maintain operability. Uh, we have added different safety streams as well in case the waste generated does not meet ADEC or EPA criteria. It, it will trigger the valve to open and send to further water treatment before sending it back into the fab waste system.
The wave software produced outputs of each stream leaving each RO and each ion exchange. Overall, the system after ion exchange was able to recover about 78% of the water that was input into the system. That is total water, not each RO individually. It's actually 78% of the 770,000 gallons per day. This water after the ion exchange is very close to 7.0, a pH representing deionized water. That is a good amount of water to be reused. And to continue our results, the continuous process will remain operational as long as the fab operates. Wastewater from the semiconductor rinsing process will be processed through reverse osmosis and ion exchange. The system can remove up to 18 different ions with the final total dissolved solids of 10.22 milligrams per liter in our product stream. The system has a total capital investment of just over a billion dollars, and on the table to the right, you can see our finances over a 30-year period. For our operation, a total of five operators across different shifts will maintain the process's functionality. Manufacturing work instructions and operating procedures will be provided to the operators and technicians. For our safety, operators, technicians, and suppliers will receive equipment operability and chemical safety training on a semi-annual basis. The ion exchange resin is the most dangerous part of our process and it can explode or catch fire if exposed to high concentrations of oxidizers. For our waste, the waste stream TDS is 92.51 milligrams per liter with the highest concentrated contaminants being sulfate and chlorine ions. Depending on the waste, the EPA and ADEQ can charge $0.0008 per gallon of hazardous waste. For our conclusion, the system can successfully filter and process water to be reused in different areas of a semiconductor manufacturing fab. This process design can be especially useful when dealing with oncoming droughts and water shortages in Arizona. Further development could focus on additional processing to recycle the wastewater into ultra-pure water.